Welcome back to Cure for the Common Game. Today, in deck number 761, we're going to talk about Gallia, the Kindler of Hope. And uh, I'm 50-50 if I pronounce that correctly. So we got one green, white, blue. That'd be Bant in your Dominera Crayola box for a 4-4 Vigilance. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. You may cast aura and equipment spells from the top of your library. That's neat. That, that's almost card draw, right? When you cast an equipment spell this way, it auto-equips. So you get that first equip free, um, and that's quite amazing. So I have, let's dive straight into the equipment, shall we? Um, we have Basilisk Caller. Why did it, my autofocus... There we go. The Great Axe, which is perfect for this particular deck because it, you get out of that first equip, so you just cast it for a one mana off the top of your deck and it auto equips. So, um, the Dark Steel Axe, Masterwork of Ingenuity, that way you can copy another equipment. I mean, it's been like, what, four days since I've done the equipment deck? <laughs> but. Colossus Hammer is a good one to copy. It's also a good one to flip up top so that you get that free equip. Now, a, a card I don't have in here, I just thought of a scroll rack it would be amazing. So that way you could control the top of your library. If you happen to draw the Colossus Hammer, it's not as big of a value as uh, if you kept it on top and cast it from the top. So if you've got your scroll racks... This is a deck for it. Uh, Hero's Blade. Black Blade Reforged. Sword of Hours. Let's roll a D12. I've had to, in our, our play table over here, I actually have a, uh, <laughs> a set of dice out of all the different, because you don't normally use 12s and 8s, 4s for uh, typical magic games. We do now. We have Vectus Gloves. Mask of Avison, Swift Foot Boots, Sword of the Animus, which also doubles as Ramp, you know. I love that card. Uh, Belt of Giant Strength. Now, this is pretty neat. It just modifies the base power and toughness to 10-10. And then it costs X less to activate, where X is the power of the creature it targets. But there again, if you flip it up, and cast it from the top of your library, you're getting it for two mana. Whisper Silk Cloak, Loxodon Warhammer, Forebearer's Blade, Holy Avenger, Behemoth Sled. A lot of this looks really familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> Grappling Hook, Moon Silver Spear, Mana Force Mace. We do have several lands that we can tap for any color. You can make mana of colors that are not in your identity. So. Uh, but we don't have the basic land type, so uh, our, our domain is going to be limited to three. Scythe Claw and Argentium Armor. Now, that's a whole lot of artifacts. Um, <clears throat> I am running the Cigar to Zaid just, um, just because <laughs> to, to get out of that, but let's look at these creatures. Um, I'm only running four auras, and I know it's an aura or equipment, but the reason why I'm only running four auras is because Ether Sworn Canonist really likes artifacts. I mean, a whole bunch. And we've already got a lot of stuff that's not artifacts in here anyway, or card draw and some removal and whatnot. But Ether Sworn Canonist is really good in a heavy, heavy artifact deck, uh, as well as the Master Transmuter. That way... You can throw your whatever back in your hand and throw out something big. There's that last Pure, pure Steel Paladin I was telling you all about four days ago in the last e equipment video. Um, this is the last one that I had. So this one is where it went. Now, the Armory Automaton. This one's kind of neat. Enters the battlefield, it just magnetizes all all the <laughs> equipment to it <clears throat> pretty neat any number of target equipment so 
I love that reminder text. Control of the equipment doesn't change. That lets us know that we can attach to it our opponent's equipment. Beautiful, right? The filigree attendant flying, always good. A great thing to hold equipment. And its powers equal the number of artifacts you control. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty. Ether Sworn Shield Mage, an artifact itself, and it has flash. And you can prevent all damage it would be dealt to artifact creatures this turn. Helps in the way of things like Blasphemous Act or Chain Reaction, things like that. <clears throat> now, the Sanctum Plow Beast is in there. If we need to cast it for a 3 6 defender, yeah, but more than likely we're going to be land cycling it. Um, Filigree Angel, 4 4 Flyers. Of, uh, I mean, now granted it is 8 mana, but I think we have enough ramp where that's not going to be as big of a hurdle as it should be but <clears throat> talk about getting some life that's probably gonna get us a ton of life and then our big just uh inkwell leviathan which is probably uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you i put it in there because it's just a big nasty hard to deal with creature but it can't carry equipment so it's probably not the right call this is probably where i need to put the um scroll rack when I get a scroll rack because shroud it can't be targeted and equip targets so let's look at uh, I mentioned the four auras they are abundant growth wild growth rancor because I mean it's really good and unquestioned authority not only does it replace itself but it makes your creature unblockable hence protection from creatures now let's look at our ramp. Uh, Ethereum Sculptor is where we start off because, I mean, artifacts costing one less is pretty neat. That makes your soul ring free. That, you know, makes all kinds of stuff better. The Simic Signet, Celestia Signet. I did put in the Ornithopter of Paradise because it does fly, and in a pinch, you can strap up equipment to it if you need to. The Azorius Signet, Obelisk of Bant, Azorius Clue Stone. Cement Locket, Selesnia Clue Stone, and Selesnia Locket. And then our, our only two spell ramp cards is the Rampant Growth and the Cultivate. And I'll be honest with you, they weren't in there. But when I listed the deck over on Architect, I had uh, two equipments that I had two copies of. And I was like, that's one of the benefits uh, of listing is uh, you catch that stuff and... I was like, oh, that can't happen. And so here is two more slots. I, I, I don't really like these two cards in this particular deck. Just simply because the the whole artifact, the canonist theory. Granted, we're not going to draw that card every single game. But mm, it, it might as well, you know, build it like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Far cry, right? Um, card draw, we got some Brainstorm. SRAM. Rites of Flourishing. Harmonize, and I figure Return of the Wild Speaker is probably going to net us a few cards since we're doing the whole Voltron thing. So now we've got removal. Uh, Acidic Slime is, uh, I mean, Death Touch is kind of a really good uh, equipment holder, and it, of course it, it does the 187 thing when it comes into play. Uh, the Dispeller's Capsule, that's our, our Disenchant. Uh, Sundering Titan. Negate, Dovin's Veto, and then I have the Bant Charm. Um, it's pretty much removal. I mean, all three modes are, you know, deal with a problem. And then we have our non-basic lands, of which there are many, because we are playing three colors. And y'all know I save the Exotic Orchards for the three color decks, just because. But we have got Blossoming Sands. Canopy Vista, Irrigated Farmland, Azorus Guildgate, Tranquil Cove, Port Town, Seaside Citadel. It's not bad, right? Evolving Wilds and Terramorphic Expanse, and I also got a Bant Panorama to go with it. Another fetch. Uh, Lumbering Falls, Simic Guildgate, Command Tower. Path of Ancestry. I, I know we're not exactly tribal, 
but it does tap for a man of any color, you know. Rupture Spire and Archway Commons. I, I really wanted two more any color lands. That's why those are in there. They're not the best, I know. Uh, to Wooded Bastion. Simic Growth Chamber. Woodland Stream. And Selesnia Guildgate. And that's it for Galea. I'm... It's one that I, I'll probably... I'll probably pick it up and play it this weekend. Just to see how it does. Um... It reads really good, though, doesn't it? And but I think the the definite telltale sign is getting the mix of creatures to equipment. That's a biggie. So we're gonna start a new row. Put seven sixty one on the wall. And uh, I do appreciate y'all. Y'all, let me know what you think. But until then, we're gonna go ahead and shuffle. Cut. Cool.